Hi there, welcome to another tutorial here by Man and Drone, the ultimate drone -y. A personal favourite of mine. This style of shot, if mastered correctly, will produce some incredible cinematic results. I first started doing these back in June 2015, after seeing someone on Instagram do one with a Phantom 2 in Miami. These reveals, if done correctly, are sure to impress anyone that watches. It's something else we can add to our cinematic collection or just for fun to impress your friends. This style of shot is actually easier than you think to master. So let's take a look at what you'll need to achieve the drone -y. Okay, you're going to require the following. A drone, obviously, Phantom 2 and above, all their equivalents if your drone make isn't DJI. An open location with a clear line of sight. I can't stress how important this is. Steady hands, courage, and several practice runs. Try to choose somewhere open and clear of power lines, air traffic, telephone lines, trees, wildlife such as birds. Be aware of illegal fly zones and height restrictions in your area. If your location does have trees, just make sure they're far enough away for when you launch your drone. If your area is boxed in by trees, it's not really gonna work so well. Let me just give you a quick example here. As you can see, the pitch rate is too much in order for us to clear the trees, so it doesn't work quite as well. The same is going to apply for other obstacles. Let me give you an idea now of the trajectory that I'm looking for. This is going to give us a nice flying angle. As you can see in this video, I'm launching the drone at this trajectory because I know it's going to give me a good angle on the reveal, having already practiced it a few times. So it's going to vary on your location, so just bear that in mind. Now let's look at some of the steps we need for the drone -y. Step 1. So after all your pre-flight checks, take off the drone and make sure it's in GPS mode and position it slightly above your head several meters in front of you. Camera pointing at you. Make sure the camera angle is at a slight angle. Try 20 degrees tilted down from straight. Adjust as necessary depending on your location and proximity to yourself. Step 3. Final check for any unexpected problems, i.e. birds and weather. Make sure that wind conditions are as calm as possible. It will vary at altitude, so bear that in mind. Step 4 is to hit that video record button. as We're almost ready to go. Step 5. Now we're ready to go. Let's engage the throttle up, pitch down simultaneously in a calm manner. Go half to full throttle and full pitch down. Have confidence in your drone's ability. It will go far over water and land. Stand still and refrain from moving from these controller positions. Keep your hands steady. Eyes on the drone. Keep checking that VDU for reference and what you're capturing. Send the drone out as far as you can so we have all that footage to work with afterwards. Step six is to bring the drone to a stop once you're happy with what you've captured. Bring the drone back to the home position and repeat again if you think you can improve upon that first attempt. This will require a couple of attempts to get right. I can usually get the shots I want within two attempts now. Bear in mind your battery will only last a couple of attempts if you plan on taking the drones out as far as a mile say and several hundred meters high trust me they will go this far even in slight winds so do have faith in the equipment and your own abilities if you're on the coast though just be aware as winds can be extremely deceptive especially as you climb you don't want to be flying drone back in a strong headwind and vice versa So the other method for capturing a drone in one that gives us complete freedom to move around or make the scene look completely autonomous is to use one of the intelligent flight modes. Now the one for the DJI Phantoms will be waypoint mode. So we want to do exactly the same as we did before, but except now we stayed step four, we're going to select our waypoint mode. So we have our, we try and position our drone here so we're happy with what we're seeing on the VDU. So I want to set my waypoint one. You may get a few warnings here that flag up, uh, mainly just for, for safety reasons, but you can, you can start the drone 
fairly close to where you're standing. So with this mode, the, the benefits are obviously we're going to be a lot more creative um, once it's all set up and um, I'm happy with the way it looks. I could hide the uh, remote controller and bag or whatever and just sort of walk around or something or try and try and be creative here. So it doesn't look like there's someone there's someone filming or you, you could have a different person, obviously. Um, within the scene and then you wouldn't need you wouldn't really need to use the, the intelligent flight mode because if you were piloting and filming then uh, you would be out of subject so anyway we can fly away here now and they've actually changed the the speed you're able to uh, record and and fly at with these intelligent flight modes it used to be you could only fly at a maximum of five meters a second which really wasn't quick enough so with this one, now we can fly uh, 10 meters a second. But obviously here when I'm going away on the reveal, just to record the waypoints, it will be faster. So I've got my waypoint two here set, bringing the drone back. And then once uh, we're happy with that, you can record those waypoints. And obviously an important uh, return to home altitude should the uh, worst case scenario happen you lose signal so 30 30 meters is a good one is going to clear these these trees here um, maybe a little bit higher in places but um, once the waypoints are uploaded the aircraft will return home and literally as soon as it gets back to the waypoint one it will fly away automatically so you won't have much time to uh, to get ready so to give you a nice distance uh, to, to your last point once it's ready and obviously when you set your your speed on uh, default you see I slide it up to 10 meters a second there so that's a that's a good speed to fly away at once it once it returns to the point it'll turn around where the camera was facing and fly away there we go okay here we are in premiere and i have my media files already imported for our demonstration here so let me just run through these clips here with you. So I've got this one here and you'll see that the very first few seconds uh, which I hit record for, I'm messing around just trying to get the, the drone in alignment for the actual flyaway. Uh, so obviously once you're happy with the way the, the drone looks on the VDU, you can fly away. Unless of course you're doing it on in autonomous mode with one of the intelligent flight modes. So let's zoom back in now it might be hard to tell but there is going to be a slight wobble due to the actual altitude here and, and the wind conditions obviously with the little uh, phantoms from dji they're going to be susceptible to so the wind environment so you're never really going to get a true true straight line this flight as it happens is actually quite a true flight there is slight wobble here and there if you study the clip carefully, but this can be reduced. Now we can do this with a plugin called Warp Stabilizer. So I'm going to run through how to do that and also speed up the the clip itself to try and uh, sort of make it a little bit more interesting. So. We're, I'm using the music file at the beginning of the tutorial here and I'm going to use the second part because it'll just flow better so I'll mark in here roughly and but first I'll drag the the first clip here over to our sequence and it creates this this new sequence here for us and then obviously the uh, the sound file and our audio one track below and if we just zoom in here and then turn the magnification up a little bit on our timeline 
and you can see where the song drops it sort of drops around here so we should try and do the same with our video uh, as soon as it flies away is where we with is where we want the music to match up so let's try and find that on the video first let's so it's, it's obviously around here so we can add a marker by pressing m so that we know it's around there now what we want to do is cut from there delete that section move it to the beginning of the track here then we can claw back some of that footage there and fade it in now we're going to we can fade it in with it with a dip obviously with most of my dronies they're in like sequence with mass masses of other clips so that's usually how they work best um, rather than single ones on their own but they you know they're still still good to look at if if you're just if your video is just of a single drainy so let's let's look at the effects and let's let's find the uh, the dip in the in the video looking for a dip to black and we can drag this up over to the first clip here now it's, the duration will only be about 25 frames per default so if I change this to uh, sort of 2 to 15 say sort of brings it up to that that marker it's of a rough a little rough play through here and you can see not not too bad for a first attempt you can obviously zoom right in here on the timeline and then even perfect try and perfect it but you know really i think <clears throat> most people are going to see that as synced up even if it's out by m maybe one frame but i think that's pretty pretty much spot on for the first first attempt so this, this is the basic way of just sort of mixing the clip up making sure it's in sync with our music now for our second clip we're going to want to introduce it on one of the drum beats or key changes uh, for the music also so we're going to be doing that after we're happy with the amount of content that's been played with our first clip so I think it's pretty good to show sort of the whole area where it, where it flies over this this mountain bit here because it really gives more of a a sense of uh, epic scale and surroundings of what's going on here. So that will happen at around 30 seconds into the clip. Now, depending on how you're pushed for time, obviously the, the song here is running out sort of around here and I, I still need to fit in another clip. So I'm going to ramp this, this clip up and uh, sp speed it up a little bit. So we can do that with our speed ramp. So let's just click on here or right click or control click Mac show clip keyframes time remapping speed now I'll do something here but the way to see our keyframe point here is to increase the size you can either scroll up on your mouse with the video one selected or press control on the keyboard and scroll up so let's bring it back now I'm thinking we want to sort of start the speed we want a gradual speed up from around here so 
let's make sure that's around sort of five five seconds in and I'm going to add a keyframe here and I'll add two little markers here now I'm going to drag one of them out it doesn't really matter which one you drag out as long as one sort of going towards the beginning and then one so that sort of around there we can always adjust them as and when now still with the video one selected we want to click within this area here and you'll see another little tool appear now this this curve we want to manipulate so we can change the line here now if we want to speed up we have to drag the line up and as you can see a little percentage point increase so that means right now it's at 137 so it's going to be playing at 137% instead of 100% so it's obviously 37% faster than normal but I think that's a little too slow. I'd probably be more happy with something like 160. I don't want to look at look at the clip and think, oh well, it's too it's too quick. This doesn't look realistic. Um, if I do that, if I speed it up to, you know, 400%, you're going to see these people moving around. It's going to look unrealistic. So let's let me just bring it to around. 160 where it's still acceptable and bring it back but one of the main problems is here it's going from 100 normal playback and then right here it's jumping straight into 160 so we want to smooth that out a bit now this this tool here will allow us to do that so just click on one one end and then move it around so that the line is more gradual so it's going to affect the ramp up speed and become more consistent between these two points so just adjust it as you deem necessary you can see the curve here is quite nice this will do for me for this this example I won't over complicate things So let's scrub through. Let's have another little listen. So here's here's quite good. It's we've got that mountain peak. And let's listen out for the key change on the the tune. Might bring it back actually. Let's have a little listen. Yeah, I quite like around there. Let me drag it in, have another look. Yeah. Somewhere it's somewhere around there. So with the audio one selected, uh oh. That I will just mark in there. So let me zoom back out of our timeline and then we'll cut. Cut that clip out. Back to our project. Now let's have a look at our second clip. Again, at the beginning I'm going to be messing around, trying to line the drone up. So let's find the point as soon as the drone flies away, which is not too far past the beginning. So we're almost there. We can, we can, we can cut from there. You know, it's no, it's no big, big deal. Uh, but I will start it. I think around one. I think around the two-second mark is perfect. So I'll mark in, and then I'm going to drag it across 
straight across here. Let's see how it matched up with the music. So again, not too bad as far as matching the uh, the music up for a first attempt. So this will do for our demonstration purposes. But again, maybe I can ramp it up, increase the speed, and I would just repeat the same as I did for clip one. But if we have a look at our clip on closer inspection, you might notice a bit of warbling around. Uh, this is because obviously uh, w your wind conditions and the fact that I'm using a DJI Phantom, so the wingspan is quite small and they're not the most stable of things, especially with the gimbal too. Um, so we can sort of correct this with a plugin called Warp Stabilizer. Usually it works 90% of the time and there are some settings we need to look at if you want it as good as possible. So I've looked up warp here on our effects panel and I've just dragged it across. So it's now, it's applying it in the background. Now, if I go over to our effects, usually by default, all the best settings are already pre-selected. So we don't need to mess around with these. Uh, the important one to look at though is our smoothing here in our smooth motion and it will be at 50% on by default. Now, this is quite a lot so it will do quite a lot of correction uh, if, it, if it's on 50. Uh, usually you can get away with sort of 10, 10%, 20% and there'll, there'll only be a slight crop because uh, it will need to make a slight uh, crop adjustment just to uh, do its thing. So let's just wait until it's analyzed this clip for us and then we'll come back and uh, see see what it's come back with. Okay, so the warp stabilization has now finished and as you can see on our auto scale here, it's come up with 101.5%. So it's not too bad. We haven't lost that much around the uh, actual footage. Um, but as this, this clip isn't rendered out, but it, it will be a lot smoother than the original. So I'd probably be happy with leaving that at, at 50. We can also change it to anything, anything less than 50 as well and it would still look okay. Obviously, don't take it lower than, than say 10%, but just, just sort of experiment around with your clips and see which works best. Obviously, because it takes a while to render, you don't want to be messing around too much. So usually anything between 20 and 50 works pretty well. Uh, we can do the same for our clip here that we uh, sp speed ramped, but now that's changed back, so I'll change it back to a smooth, smoother curve. Now, if we want to do the same with our clip here, if we drag it across, we'll get a little warning saying that warp stabilizer and time wrapping can't be used on the same clip. Now, in order to get around this, there's a clever little trick we can do we right click, control click on the clip we want to warp stabilize, we simply select nest and we can name it anything we like for this purpose. We'll just leave it at nested sequence 01. It'll go green like this, uh, which will allow us to apply a warp. Now we can do the same as we did for our second clip here. Um, obviously, we won't go through the rendering just for this demonstration purpose, but that's how you would get around uh, that issue if you wanted to apply a time remap and a warp stabilize together. So this is just a, a basic run through. 
of what I do to edit my clips. Um, best thing to do really is to get into Premiere and just start messing around. Just get familiar with the warp stabilizer and find out that, um, that perfect balance that, that works for you. This concludes the Man and Drain tutorial for the Ultimate Droney. If you found this tutorial useful, be sure to like it and share. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter to learn of my latest movements. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Best video settings for the Phantom 4.